This video is from the Division of Thoracic Surgery at the University at Buffalo. It describes the robotic resection of a posterior mediastinal tumor and is presented to you by Dr. Musisi and Dr. Perry. A 60-year-old female with significant history of Crest syndrome, COPD, and a remote brief history of smoking presented to the emergency room after a fall from a bicycle. She was noted to have multiple trauma, including head injury and a right shoulder injury. MRI brain performed as part of workup was significant for a left paraspinal thoracic inlet mass invading the T2 vertebra. Shown here is a superior mediastinal mass in the thoracic inlet, which is a burden the T2 vertebra. Here you can see that it is invading between the laminas into the spinal canal, but not invading into the dura and the neurotube. And lastly, here you can see that the lamina is being distracted by the tumor. The patient was evaluated by the neurosurgery team and noted to have no neurological deficit. She was referred to thoracic surgery and consented to a combined resection. The neurosurgery portion was performed first. The T1, T2 left extradural mass was approached posteriorly in an open technique via T1 hemilaminectomy with T2 subtotal medial facetectomy. In this video, we present the thoracic portion of the surgery. A robotic approach was employed to get access to the pleural space with four body arms and an assistant port. Upon entry, we did identify the lesion, which was in close proximity with the brachial plexus and the blood vessels. We began removing the pleura from the tumor, starting with the medial portion. Nerve sheath tumors are usually benign, slow-growing masses that have risk for local invasion. Hence, this tumor must be removed because of the proximity to the spinal canal that can potentially cause neurological symptoms and morbidity to the patient. Since this was a nerve sheath tumor, we went very closely around the tumor boundaries to avoid any injury to the brachial plexus nerves and vessels associated with it. Note this decompressed portion of the tumor. It indicates the part of the tumor within the canal extending out of the foramen and anteriorly into the vertebral body where it's widespread. You can see right now, we are seeing the intercostal nerve associated with this tumor, which is separated from the tumor circumferentially above and below. Then taking the vessels going into the tumor, as well as the nerve sheath and the intercostal nerve itself, after circumferentially separating the tumor. This was achieved by cauterization with bipolar dissection. We continue further dissection all around the tumor, basically applying gentle tension, pulling the tumor away from the cavity between the thoracic inlet and the body of the vertebra, until we got into the posterior dissection by the neurosurgery team. The blood encountered at this point shows the posterior collection from the neurosurgery dissection. It was gently absorbed and packed. By working directly on the pseudocapsule of the tumor and removing it, we got into the plane of the posterior parking for the neurosurgery. With further dissection, we took the tumor completely from the canal and separated it away from the cavity. At this point, we dissected the intercostal nerve of the tumor and completely removed the tumor. The specimen was then placed in a specimen bag and extracted from the body. Hemostasis was achieved with Surgicel. We checked the area under saline to make sure there was no more bleeding. The dissection bed on the spinal canal was packed with Surgicel and replaced a 28 French tube. On post-op day two, the chest tube was taken out and the patient was discharged without any significant neurological deficit. Three months follow-up CT showed no evidence of recurrence and patient was doing remarkably well. Thank you.